every single accessibility option that we offer, that's a barrier removed for someone. As she surveys the apartment, her eyes wander to Joel. She steps past the couch. He wears the wristwatch Sarah gifted him, which now has a cracked face. To my knowledge, this is the first PlayStation game that has audio description built into the game, built into the cinematics. Now it's nighttime. Joel stirs in his sleep. You know, it really makes a lot of sense why they're focusing on features for the visually impaired, because the only way you could ever see this game as a true remake for the PlayStation 5 and something other than a blatant cash grab is if you're literally blind, bro. You know what? Maybe our boy Neil isn't that stupid after all. He found this target market that doesn't know any better. What's up gamers? I hope you guys are all having a great day today just full of so much positivity and happiness dude because I'm personally very happy because I get to talk about one of my personal favorite video game franchises of all time and that of course is none other than The Last of Us. But in all seriousness, Joel and one aside, I did in fact like the original Last of Us. Last of Us 2, not so much. In fact, I disliked it so much I never even bothered to finish it. But that's an entirely different topic for a completely different day. I could probably go on a 15 minute rant about all the issues I have with The Last of Us Part 2. But that aside, I did enjoy the original Last of Us a lot. It was one of my personal favorite games that Sony has ever put out. I think from a story and gameplay perspective, it was really well done. And overall, I really enjoyed the game a lot. So I've played through it about seven or eight times across the PS3 and PS4 So I'm not just like blindly hating on this franchise I did really enjoy the original game and in fact, I'll probably pick this game up on PC eventually I don't know if I'll get it for 70 bucks Maybe if I decide to stream it but otherwise I don't really think it's worth $70 because the game's literally a decade old They removed the entire multiplayer from it and apparently the game is now more expensive than it's ever been with less content Than it's ever had like it really doesn't make sense on the price point. So I'll probably pick it up eventually on PC. I'm just not really wild about the $70 price point for what you're getting. And this is where my biggest issue with The Last of Us Part 1 lies. Like, it is a blatant ripoff for $70. Like, I don't really care how you spin it. Like, they literally removed content from a 10-year-old game and now expect you to pay $10 over the price of the game when it released back in 2013 with that missing content not there. I mean, let me just put it this way, man. When me and Dreamcast Guy both agree that a game is a blatant cash grab. I think there's something really wrong here. Okay, so I have to admit that I'm a little bit nervous. This video is probably going to get me into a bit of trouble with the PlayStation community, but I think we need to be very open and honest about The Last of Us Part 1 Remake. The Last of Us Part 1 Remake isn't a remake. I actually think Neil Druckmann lied. But that's just my thoughts. This is a remaster of a remaster. It is a $70 graphics mod. If you're willing to support that, that's on you. You know, it's really not every day that I can say that I agree with Dreamcast Guy, but I think he's been pretty much spot on in his coverage surrounding this game because I don't really know of anyone really who can actually defend this shit, bro. Like, I know the PlayStation fanboys try and, you know, suck the schlong all day and try to defend the $70 price point for video games that Sony's pushing, which if any one publisher out there should not be charging $70 for video games, it's Sony because they literally don't have to pay the 30% platform tax they charge developers so they get to keep all the money from the sale of their own game so they are the last people in the gaming industry that actually needed to increase the price of video games but you know people like mbg will tell you that they had no other choice man they already drew the line in the sand and you know what we just have to bend over and take it bro but in all honesty i don't really care about the 70 dollars price point because i'm not really the type of guy who has to rush out day one and be like oh my god i got the game first before everybody else like you know i can wait for a game to go on sale which typically that's what I just do nowadays because very rarely do I actually find a game that I think is worth full price unfortunately but you know it is what it is man I don't really think $10 extra on new release video games is a make or break situation but in the case of a remaster of a remaster that has less content than the original version of the game that is now charging $10 more than the original price of the game like I think there's kind of an issue there and the fact that Sony straight up lied in the marketing with 
material leading up to the announcement of the actual details surrounding The Last of Us Part 1 is just another nail in the coffin for me, which, you know, it's kind of ironic too because they did the same shit with Last of Us Part 2. Deceptive marketing. Like, they made it look like Joel was part of the game way more than he was. They put him in, like, key moments in the story, which never actually played out in the final release of the game. So, Naughty Dog has a very long and storied history recently, especially under the man who's calling the shots now that literally self-inserted himself into Abby in The Last of Us Part 2. None other than our boy Neil Cuckman, bro. But they do have a very long and storied history of just blatantly misrepresenting their games prior to launch, and I don't really know how you can look at this quote-unquote remake and then read this fucking line from the marketing material and do anything but laugh at this shit, man. But yeah, what I wanted to do here today is just go ahead and take a look at this wonderful 10-minute announcement trailer of The Last of Us Part 1 because, you know, I think it really highlights just all these amazing improvements you're dropping $70 on, which most people are totally gonna fucking notice, man. I'm coming. More than two years ago, when we were finishing Last of Us Part 2 and we were working on those flashbacks within that scene for the first game, we got excited with the idea of like, oh man, what if we made The Last of Us Part 1 to look as good, if not better, than what we have done with Last of Us Part 2, which we really pushed the boundaries of like what we could do from gameplay and a graphical standpoint, and felt like if we do that, we could actually come even closer to our original vision of what the first game would have been had we not been constrained by technology. So what do you do when you're finally presented with that opportunity? You don't change the gameplay whatsoever, you remove the multiplayer, which is a key portion of the gameplay of the game, and you barely bump up the visuals. So, you know, well done, Neil. Really outperforming yourself as usual. Totally didn't just want a quick cash grab where you could sell the exact same game again for the third time. I don't know, man, people give Todd how Howard and Skyrim shit, but Neil Druckmann's outpacing them on his sweet little lies and re-releasing the same game at this point. The original creative vision of The Last of Us, I think in a lot of ways, was larger than what the PlayStation 3 was capable of. Is that why you literally removed content from the game when you ported it over to the PS5? I mean, even the PS4 version had more content than this version of the game, and it was $20 cheaper. It also came out eight years ago and is fully playable on the PlayStation 5, but you know what, guys, let's just keep going. The tech of the PS5, it's like an open box of, of tools and goodies that we can play from and draw from. The 4K, HDR, improved haptics, 60 frames, help us to reimagine The Last of Us. Yeah, slightly bumping up the textures and, you know, increasing the resolution that a game runs at is not reimagining a video game. Sorry, bro. It gave us opportunities to rebuild our characters at the highest fidelity. Not only are the characters more detailed, I mean down to the is it just me, or did that last one look worse than the original? Like, I don't know, man. I think Tess got majorly downgraded in this version of the game. The irises and the pupil depth. You know, you fall into the eyes of the characters. Yep, this is what most Sony games are concerned about now, the cutscenes rather than the actual gameplay experience. But to not only just have the highest fidelity characters in the cutscene, but also in gameplay. It's the same character, so now we can do these seamless transitions in and out. Every part of the game has benefited from seamless transitions and emotional scripting. Pretty good, huh? Honestly, man, I'm kind of mixed on which one looks better again here. Like, honestly, the PS4 Pro version kind of looks a little bit better to me. I'm not sure. Our stories happen in game. And again, in all honesty, the lighting looks better on the PS4 Pro version than the PS5 version, so I don't really know what the fuck's going on here. Also, the colors pop a lot more on the PlayStation 4 version as well. One of the things that the PlayStation 5 is really enabling is that we're able to have a density of physics objects in a scene that we just we could never do before. Like this has always been <laughs> the dream is to have this number of bumpables, chippables, breakables, destructible objects in a scene. It just makes the world feel rich, it makes it feel lived in. Materials can have the properties that you'd expect. 
the turret truck in, in I mean, I definitely do think that the new physics effects are a nice touch, but they almost looked comical when that window broke right there. Like, the glass almost looks like it's bouncing around the room. I don't know if it's just me. Materials kind of have the properties that you'd expect. The turret truck in, in Pittsburgh, when it's firing at you and it's just ripping apart the concrete and sending objects flying left and right. Seeing things break, like there's fear, there's a real fear that it invokes. And it's giving us a much more dynamic range of gameplay to play with. How does that affect the gameplay depth? Like, yeah, it looks nicer, but it's not going to change the way you actually play the video game, bro. They're really trying to cling on to this idea that the gameplay has been significantly improved in this, like, remake, quote-unquote. But it really hasn't. They changed absolutely nothing. Surround him! Our AI tech has just increased incredibly. I forgot where I read this. It may have been the comment section of this exact video, but it was like when developers have to brag about AI in their video games, typically it's not a great sign. Like no shit AI technology has gotten better in the course of the past decade, dude. Like this should be just like a silent patch they do to the game after release. It shouldn't be a big selling point. And I think other than the graphical improvements is genuinely the only improvement they actually made to this version of the game. One of the other big AI improvements is the buddies. The buddies technology that we developed for The Last of Us Part II has this very sophisticated understanding of like, okay, this is where the enemies can see their exposure. We not only have exposure, we have future exposure. So buddies can know, okay, that enemy is walking forward and they're about to round this corner. Yeah, I do remember that when The Last of Us came out, it always was comical how, like, Ellie would just walk out right in front of an enemy and the enemies wouldn't even fucking pay attention to him. So, I mean, I guess that's a good fix, but that should have been something they just did silently after launch. Again, this should not be a selling point of a $70 remaster of a remaster 10 years after the game came out. Like, the fact that this is genuinely the only improvement you can actually point to aside from the graphical update is an absolute fucking joke. So in three seconds, that corner is going to be exposed. So I'd better move now to avoid this enemy seeing me. This really lets the buddies make very complex uh, decisions and maintain that, that feeling of stealth much more believably. Another big enhancement to the gameplay is that we have this technology called motion matching. Motion matching is this technology that's basically using logic that tries to match the desired movement to a bucket of hundreds of animations. And just to clear this up, because I know people have been running with this, oh, they upgraded the animations. No, these animations have already been in the game. It's just they're trying to do a better job of matching up which animation should be in which particular situation, basically. That's it. It's nothing new. It's literally the same recycled animations that have already been in the game. They're just using them in different instances, which really aren't that different, and chances are you're probably not even going to fucking notice this whatsoever. But again, the fact that the bulk of this trailer is being being focused on these improvements is absolutely fucking pathetic. Like, these should be like a 20 second mention at the end of a long list of actual improvements to the game. The capped actor has gone in and run this whole gauntlet of movements to get a really full set of all the different ways a person can move. And then it's basically every frame trying to find the best matching animation that fits the path of where the character is going to go. And this motion model just gives this really seamless sense of transition. I don't know, man. Looks the exact fucking same to me, but you know what? I'm not a game developer. Player's movement is just a lot cleaner. It's this really smooth organic movement through the space. First, we just had to build that core experience. And then beyond that, we wanted to add uh, several features that fans have been asking for. The fact that they're trying to advertise that photo mode is a new addition is an absolute fucking joke, bro. Photo mode literally was in the 2014 remaster of this game, which is still playable on PS5, by the way. Like, the fact they're actually trying to claim this is something new is absolutely pathetic, and it shows you just how bad this quote-unquote remake is. I don't know, personally, I have never once felt the urge to use a photo mode in a video game, but hey, man, it's there for those who care about it, and it's been there for for the past eight years. For example, we now have a permadeath mode. That literally could have been a free update. It would take them zero time at all. 
I long doubt we've added a brand new speed run mode so players can time themselves. There's a Holy shit, dude. They added a timer to the top right corner of the screen. Shut up and take my fucking money. Whole community of gamers that just want to see how fast they can play through this game. Beyond that, we added a bunch more of unlockables. So there's all these different outfits for Ellie and Joel that uh, people can unlock. A model viewer mode so people can really appreciate the details. We added award-winning accessibility features. You know, I don't want to talk too much shit about the accessibility features, but I'm just going to go out and say, like, the vast majority of people do not care about this whatsoever, and 99% of the people who are considering buying this quote-unquote remake will never touch any of this shit. So, while it's great that it's there, it in no way justifies the price. Every single accessibility option that we offer, that's a barrier removed for someone. As she surveys the apartment, her eyes wander to Joel. She steps past the couch. He wears the wristwatch Sarah gifted him, which now has a cracked face. To my knowledge, this is the first PlayStation game that has audio description built into the game, built into the cinematics. Now it's nighttime. Joel stirs in his sleep. And that's really the way we've tried to push the frontier of accessibility on this game. You know, it really makes a lot of sense why they're focusing on features for the visually impaired, because the only way you could ever see this game as a true remake for the PlayStation 5 and something other than a blatant cash grab is if you're literally blind, bro. You know what? Maybe our boy Neil isn't that stupid after all. He found this target market that doesn't know any better. So much of the identity of The Last of Us is the world. We revamped completely the art direction. You know, everything from these expansive. It's literally the exact same art direction, just slightly up res, bro, like with better textures and more foliage, which makes sense considering the first game came out 10 years ago. You know, they are really trying here. I gotta give them credit for that, but there's just nothing new here, guys. It's the exact same game, just with less content than when it came out, and more expensive. The vistas that not only are they beautiful, but you feel the environment. The fucking sound effect when he said feel, bro. The vistas that not only are they beautiful, but you feel the environment. You feel the environments in a much more visceral way. The rooftops overlooking the Capitol building, for example, like just the, the breath of fresh air when you go up there and you just like, you feel that sort of release in, in tension. And then, you know, to juxtapose that, down in the, the tunnels in wilds and you get that dank, flooded tunnel feel, that humidity, you can actually feel it. I think this guy missed his true calling as a car salesman, bro. Like, Jesus Christ, it's kind of impressive. All these environments are just completely reimagined. I mean, they're really not. That so-called volumetric fog that fanboys love to throw out, you know, that term, has just been removed and there's more foliage. The environments are literally the exact same. Now we got our engine on the PS5, those haptics, the 3D audio, the fast loading. It really creates a much more immersive and because of that much more emotional experience. One of the things I absolutely love with the 3D audio in The Last of Us Part 1. Damn, I thought Sony had given up on the 3D audio marketing ploy. It's literally just surround sound if you guys have no idea what the fuck they're talking about. Is being able to hear an enemy before they sneak up on you. And trying to do a, a, a stalker fight with the 3D audio is just so much fun. You're hearing them skitter around in a different room and you're hearing them trying to get it behind you. <laughs> Having that two-part reaction of- Like I said, man, literally just surround sound. Most games have had directional audio for decades. Like hearing, turning, seeing, reacting, it, it just really heightens that sense of just being grounded. You are in this character, you are in this world. Now, with the PlayStation 5, the amount of control that developers have over the DualSense, it's really, really cool. All right, I'm gonna skip this whole controller segment because I'm just gonna go on the record. I absolutely hate the DualSense features. The fact that games make it more difficult for you to pull the trigger in a game is fucking obnoxious. It was in Ratchet and Clank, it was in Call of Duty, and both times I experienced it, I absolutely could not fucking stand it. Also, I hate controller vibration. I always turn it off when I play 
play video games. So this whole segment for me, I don't really care about whatsoever. So I'm going to save everybody the time of me bitching about it and just go ahead and skip right over this shit. What I personally absolutely adore is the way we can enhance the really like quiet, subtle moments of gameplay. So it's like when Joel goes in to pet the giraffe, getting that little light touch on the haptics as he's petting the giraffe. Oh my god, guys, I can't tell you how many times I've wished that I was that giraffe while playing The Last of Us, dude. Now I can know what it feels like to have Joel stroke me. To me, that's the essence of The Last of Us. It Controller vibration is the essence of The Last of Us. You heard it here first, guys. It's the high tension moments, it's the low tension moments, it's all of it feeling grounded. It's your feeling immersed in this world. It's all about bringing you along with that story in as many ways as we can. And that's what the new technology on the PlayStation 5 is allowing. So was that everything you hoped for? Jury's still out. There's something special about that core experience of playing as Joel and Ellie on this journey. Then why the fuck did you ruin that, Neil? You don't get to rush this. Then to take that experience and really honor it. Oh, Neil, we haven't forgotten. Joel, get up. Joel, fucking get up. There's something special about that core experience of playing as Joel and Ellie on this journey. Then to take that experience and really honor it and keep the authenticity of it and keep the authenticity of it but elevate it in every way possible whether it's pipeline whether it's art direction whether it's a technology everything that allows us to make that experience better except the actual gameplay that is what a shame man not different extremely better that's why, to me, this is the definitive way to play The Last of Us. Because it's coming out on PC, which I guess is maybe the one silver lining in all of this? And that's it, guys. That is the glorious Last of Us 1 remake for the PlayStation 5 and PC, man. You know, this really sets a new gold standard for remakes, if you ask me. You know, forget Final Fantasy 7 Remake. That game's definitely not even close to the scale of what Naughty Dog did to completely overhaul the experience of The Last of Us Part 1. I don't know, guys. I mean, I guess maybe the only way you could probably justify the price of this is like me if I was going to stream it, which even then I'm not really in a huge rush to play this game again. I've already played it multiple times at this point. Or if you've never played it before and you really don't give a shit about the price, or if you want to play it on PC. I think those are the three situations that would maybe make sense to pick this game up, but otherwise it probably should have been like 30, 40 bucks at the most, and I don't think anyone would have had a problem with it, but the simple fact remains is it's literally the exact same game with no gameplay changes, just visual changes. They removed the entire multiplayer from the game, which is a huge huge chunk of content, and they're charging more money for this game than what it cost when the game originally came out with more content than it has right now, not even considering the fact that in 2014 when this game released for the PlayStation 4 in the remastered form, it came with all the DLC and was $10 lower than the initial launch price. So this is the most expensive way ever to play The Last of Us 1 with the least amount of content ever available. So all in all, man, this whole remake is a complete fucking L in my book, and I I really don't think there's any defense for it whatsoever, and Sony and Naughty Dog are rightfully getting shit for it. But anyway, guys, that is gonna do it for this video today. If you did enjoy it, make sure to drop a like on it. I would greatly appreciate it. And as always, I do want to thank you all so much for taking the time out of your day to check out this video, and for all the recent support as well. You guys are the fucking best, and I really do appreciate it. And I will catch you guys next time.